Net zero, according to the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, net zero emissions are achieved when anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases are balanced by the equivalent removal over a specified period. In 2018, the IPCC special report spurred focus on the goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2050 to limit harmful global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Organizations around the world are making net zero climate commitments, but need help in getting there. In many ways, for corporations around the world, the climate challenge can also be seen as a climate opportunity. This is really about going above and beyond. We're developing a point of view which combines four themes. The first is having a business and climate strategy that is perfectly aligned through climate intelligence. What gets measured gets managed. The second, operational reductions through renewable energy power purchase agreements, renewable energy certification, transportation decarbonization, electric vehicles, and so on. The third, value chain reductions through working in partnership with suppliers and the broader ecosystem to develop powerful alliances. And the fourth, carbon credit portfolio to support carbon project developments for carbon neutrality and carbon removals. All of these together combine to provide effective solutions for organizations to progress their energy and climate goals. Getting to net zero is going to require an all hands on deck approach to addressing scope one, two, and three emissions and will have a massive impact on the economy. In the journey to net zero, many companies start by addressing their scope two emissions, which come mostly from purchase electricity. And they start there for a few reasons. One, the renewable energy markets are fairly mature and cost effective in many parts of the world. Two, buyers can make rapid progress toward their climate goals, three contract structures are getting more and more streamlined. Currently, the most common methods for sourcing renewable electricity are signing power purchase agreements, PPAs, and those get signed directly with renewable energy developers themselves. This has been an increasingly popular tool and continues to be. Companies also work with their local utilities and their retail suppliers on custom uh, renewable energy offers. And purchasing certificates such as renewable energy certificates or RECs in the US, GOs or guarantees of origin in Europe and elsewhere uh, also remain popular. Three Degrees has seen an explosion in PPA demand globally, mostly in the US and in Europe, but our clients are also asking about PPAs in Asia where markets are generally less mature, although this is changing. PPAs are not only a solution for a company's scope two emissions, but also for the electricity use in their supply chains. So their scope three emissions. Electricity use in supply chains can also be addressed with PPAs. Renewables have been getting a lot of attention in the media and in conferences, but scope one emissions are also important and can't be ignored over the long term, although they're challenging to address. Scope one emissions are direct emissions from sources your company controls. On-site natural gas combustion is a good example. We see enormous opportunity for electrification as a solution. That's electrification of space heating. So think heat pumps, electrification of transportation. So electric vehicles, vans, et cetera. The more we electrify, the more renewables uh, will have an important role. There are also replacement fuels for scope one emissions. Uh, there are a lot of people talking about green hydrogen these days. That's hydrogen produced using renewable electricity. This is promising, but we're uh, in an early phase there. There's also renewable natural gas, which is also a high potential opportunity, but has limited availability in the market. Getting to net zero is going to require the collaboration of a lot of different companies and industries together to address scope one, two, and three emissions for global decarbonization. Once you've begun addressing scope one and two emissions, the next hurdle is to tackle your scope three emissions. Scope three are the indirect emissions from upstream and downstream activities that are outside of your operational boundaries, such as business travel, purchase goods, the use of sold products. And I'm frequently asked, why should I be responsible for emissions that are outside of my operational boundaries? 
There are a few reasons for that. The first is that investors increasingly have found that if you are held responsible for emissions that are outside of your operational boundaries, but over which you have influence, then you will use that influence to start lowering those emissions and in an aggressive manner that our climate needs. In light of an increasingly volatile environmental conditions, think about how your company affects the climate and how the climate affects you. It's just good business practice. There are three important components to addressing value chain emissions. Those are measurement, materiality, and engagement. Measurement is simple in theory. It's the scale and location of your value chain emissions. Materiality is the concept that you should focus your reduction efforts on not just the largest source of your emissions, but those over which you have the most influence. The third component is engagement, which is where you step out of your analysis paralysis and talk to your suppliers, vendors, and customers about lowering their emissions. There are lots of different ways that you can engage your value chain, such as product innovation. Change the way that your product is made to lower the carbon impact influence across the value chain. You can change the way that suppliers manufacture the inputs to your product. Advocacy. You can team up with others in your value chain to advocate for policy that incentivizes climate action. Addressing scope three emissions can be one of the most challenging pieces of an organization's journey to net zero. However, given the impact of these emissions on a company's footprint, it's a critical component to any climate action plan. It also presents a unique opportunity to engage your suppliers and customers on something as important as climate change.